to license it. Hi everybody and welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a Hot Wheels Sheriff Patrol car. This one looks like it's been in one too many high-speed chases and was probably abandoned at the police impound lot. My goal with this project is to Canadianize it by turning it into a period correct late 70s RCMP Royal Canadian Mounted Police patrol car of my youth. Let's see if we can't breathe some new life back into its breathalyzer. There was a first responders theme build recently, sponsored by Matchbox Mark, and I wasn't part of that. By my own choice, I'm not yet skilled enough to go up against these other guys and their restorations. Maybe one day. So this is going to be my own private first responders tribute to RCMP Constable Heidi Stevenson, who had served in the force for 23 years and was one of the 22 people who were killed on April 19th by a gunman disguised as a policeman in Nova Scotia, Canada, in the worst mass shooting in my home country's history. To all the victims and the family members who lost a loved one that day, I dedicate this build. As always, we begin with the disassembly process and the bench vise, and this Hot Wheel has two rivets, one in the front and one in the back, and standard procedure to open those up with a four millimeter drill bit, and then I pop off the top to find what kind of surprises might be inside this one. And today's surprise is no real surprise. It is filled with dirt, and it looks like there had been a spider that should have been arrested for loitering under the back bench. And look at the dirt and the grit and the grunge. This one got driven hard out in the sand pile. You can see it on the inside of the body too. So we'll have to start with a, a real super cleaning on this one. So metal base and good wheels that I'm going to be able to refurbish and keep. Whenever possible, I try to maintain originality, and that looks like a go for today. I drill out these two posts with a one millimeter drill bit, and the yellow tape is just a, a gauge for the correct depth to fit a couple of these M2 screws, as you can see here. Out comes the hot soapy water and a toothbrush and I think it's important for all reasons to get this really clean at the beginning. That just makes it more pleasant to work on and of course we're looking for a almost new finished product so we got to get rid of the old. Plastic interior was in very good condition, just dirty, and this is a tinted bluish green windshield or windscreen depending on where you're from by the way when you make a comment if you do let me know where you're from and where you're watching this video I'm in Switzerland and I hope you're enjoying watching this especially if you're new to my channel and I'd love you to give it a thumbs up and become a regular subscriber to my newly updated regularly updated content just hit the button in the lower right corner of your screen. I use a couple of different very, very fine grit wet dry sandpapers on the windshield. And when I'm finished with the sanding, you can see a vast improvement already 
probably good to go like that, but I'll take an extra few moments right here and put a little bit of polish on the end of a Q-tip. And you can still feel very sensitively a little bit of abrasiveness until that's worked in and done its job. And then I just flip over the Q-tip and buff it off clean it with a, a clean microfiber cloth and this is the final dip into some floor polish for shine and protection and I'll put a cover over that and set it off to the side until it's nice and dry and because it's a patrol car there's a little uh, light bar that pops up through the roof of the car and I'm using some really fine translucent red paint here. I don't want bold, solid red. This one looks a little more realistic in my opinion. That's the last you're going to see of the old number 701 on the roof of the car. And this paint stripper does a wonderful job, so all I need to do is set it aside and cover it up and let science do its thing. Would you believe me if I told you I have never seen the inside of a police cruiser? It's true. I've got lots of friends who are policemen. I've just never done any business from the inside, so I'm happy to report that to you today. The Sheriff Patrol car debuted in 1982 and it had a production run up to 97. And it's one of the many Hot Wheels models that was designed by Larry Wood. Originally, it was named Highway Patrol when it was released in 1978 and then it became known as Fire Chaser in 1979, and it finally took on the Sheriff Patrol name in 1982. And the design is based on the 7778 Dodge Monaco. That was a standard police car model for the cruisers back in the day. I'm going to base my uh, restoration on about a 1977 RCMP cruiser. And I downloaded some pics and graphics to show you when I get around to that stage of the game. Time to clean up after the bare metal detail and the wire brush work and that fine steel wool leaves a terrible mess, but it did pretty well on this casting. I find the older the model and the harder it was played with, the rougher shape it's in. I guess that's understandable. Final step before paint is to degrease all the oils and impurities off of the body. Light gray primer. I think this is Rust-Oleum. I'm pleased with that. It's right out of the auto body shop off the top shelf. And then you can see I can close my spray booth lid to keep the vapors in while that sets up for a little while. And this is a nice blue fleck metallic that suits the original sheriff car almost exactly and Based on my online research, it's going to suit the 77 RCMP patrol car perfectly. And I'll apply a couple of different coats, a little heavier each time, to get a consistent finish on this. And again, I can cover it up, keep anything from flying in there, and keep all the dust down. Now, as with many patrol cars, this was a two-tone color, and the doors are going to be white. It's my first masking job, so wish me well on this. The blue metallic is taped off, 
and I just hit these open exposed areas with white, yeah, pretty good. Matte black on the base, I just taped off the wheels that I didn't bother removing, there was no need to. And here's what we're going for. So I made some decals by myself and I print them on the inkjet. And it's not overly adorned with decals, but on both of the white doors we want the RCMP logo. The clear liquid is decal set, which helps a little bit. Uh, this is fiddly work. And here's what I've learned about decals and models. Get it straight and walk away. <laughs> the more you fool with this, the more it's prone to just fold back on itself and you're left with a mess. These ones came out pretty good and I'm pleased. We need a little bit of chrome pen work on the front grille and on the back fender. Not too much. and it will give a good contrast to the blue metallic paint. I'm actually going to fill in the black part of these wheels, because they're kind of racing wheels that don't quite suit a police car. So that was intentional. And here you see the red lights that pop up through that opening in the roof right there. That came out nicely. And it's a really simple reassembly in this case. These are self-tapping screws. One in the front and one in the back. And as we say in Canada, tickety-boo. This one is all done. That's a period correct 1977 RCMP cruiser. Colors and logo and the lights. I didn't need to do too much with the undercarriage. And the clear coat gives it a nice shine. That one is restored. Yeah, it looked rough. Especially along the edges. It was ready for early retirement. But now it's looking good. That's my special tribute build. Be a good sport and give this one a thumbs up. It's coffee time. <laughs>